How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance at one of your questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is a customer provided the parts for a repair to the facility and now the car still has an issue. So from personal experience, this usually does not end well. If you come in with, uh, let's say, an O2 sensor that you think may be needed and the technician or the repair shop replaces that O2 sensor and now the check engine light comes back on with whatever code it was and obviously the customer the owner is not going to be happy at that point and this is why i'm against people bringing their own parts unless it fits uh, brake pads and rotors uh, mounts stuff like that and even then typically they bring uh, aftermarket stuff which never uh, fits correctly a hundred percent um and could be an issue for the installer and obviously if there is an issue with that part could turn ugly real quick because then it the, the finger pointing starts so um, anytime there is a noise or an issue and somebody just hits me up hey i have this part i want to install it unless if it's something high performance aftermarket where they're trying to make the car faster or improve the performance or whatnot then typically you know why the reason they're uh, you know trying to get that part installed right but if they have an issue and they want to replace let's say the stabilizer links or uh, rear brakes or anything like that you Usually I ask the questions, like, hey, well, why are you interested in doing this? Did somebody else recommend it? Are you having a noise? Or do you have a check engine light? Uh, do you have a pulling situation? Do you have a vibration? Whatever the situation may be, at least at that point, uh, we'll both be on the same page. Some people just want to say, hey, uh, I just want to change it. I think it's time to change it, which is fine. Uh, but I always advise, you know, using OEM parts as much as possible because the aftermarket stuff just is not the same quality. And if you're okay with that and everybody, again, is on the same page, then I'm okay with it as well. Just as long as, once again, everybody is on the same page. All right, so this next question uh, comes up a lot on the forums, on Facebook. People ask me a lot. When flashing your ECU with a K-Tuner, Honda, etc., will Honda know? Me, as a technician, as long as you flash it back before you bring it to me, I will never know, uh, unless if you tell me, obviously. But there will be nothing that I could see on my end that will tell me that the ECU is flashed. So, um, with that being said, uh, there is no flash counter, there is no flash file date, nothing of that nature that any of us can see at the time. So, if Honda wants to go ahead and deny a claim because they suspect that uh, your car has been flashed in any way, uh, shape, or form, then I would 100% ask for uh, proof of some sort where they can show you documentation that this has happened because chances are they're not going to be able to show you that because I can't show you that and I've never ran into a situation where I've uh, needed to show anything of that nature or been uh, shown that to me personally even though I've known some cars have been modified and flashed and flashed back and stuff like that obviously you are playing with fire and it becomes a very tricky situation, um, you know, with other modifications and stuff like that. But as far as flashing goes, I can never tell. Any Honda level technician uh, at the dealership will never be able to tell. And I have never seen Honda provide any documentation as well uh, to me when a car has been modified or anything of that nature. So uh, once again, if they do say that they can't tell, I would 100% advise having physical proof on a piece of paper of the flash dates, flash files, and chances are they're not going to be able to provide you with any of that information because they just can't get it as well. So hopefully that answers the question for you. So I've been getting a lot of complaints with blind spots not working and typically is just the owner of the vehicle just simply doesn't know how the system works. So uh, in order for the system to work, obviously there can't be anything wrong with the system itself. So everything has to be a good working function. Also, if you are parked and a car passes by you, it's not going to work. You have to be doing at least 20 miles per hour for uh, the system to work. And if you pass an object that's standing still, it's also not going to work. So you have to be doing 20 and something has to be going past you. So a car, a bus, a van, etc. 
for the system to work. Lastly, you want to make sure that the system is uh, functioning and turned on. So you could bypass some of these systems, some of these uh, safety features. Um, so a lot of people, they go and touch stuff they shouldn't be touching and all of a sudden, hey, it was working initially, now it's not working what's going on and simply the system's turned off and a lot of people you know laugh at it at that point right um but yeah we had a couple customers this week actually complain about it and a lot of times they just didn't know how the system worked or you know stuff like that and just simply it was a matter of explaining to them also when these salesmen sell these vehicles to these people they should be explaining everything to these customers and a lot of them don't all they want to do is sell the car and then move forward not all of them are like that but most of them are so if you're a salesman and you're like that shame on you if you do the right thing and kind of explain all the features to these people then that's good that's great that's what you should be doing um especially these older people that all this technology kind of overwhelms them right so you want to take the time and kind of explain to them some of the safety features some of the stuff it does even they get some alerts like hey i got this uh, light coming on when a car passes by me you know what the hell's going on so uh you also want to make sure that they're not alarmed and the system is working perfectly fine that they're aware that hey it's going to happen when a car passes by you or you drive too aggressively and uh you know somebody stops short in front of you you're going to get a brake warning message in front of you nothing's actually wrong with the car it's just a safety feature so hopefully that answers the question for you all right so the next question is what is actually part of a multi-point inspection so anytime you come to the dealer your technician should be looking over your vehicle overall completely. Now, if it's a newer vehicle, obviously they're gonna do a quick check. It's not gonna be as thorough, just a quick stuff. Personally, when I get a car, whether it's side work or it's through the dealership, I like to take it around a block for two reasons. One, to see if there's any noises, and if there is, uh, two, I want to make sure it wasn't a noise that I caused by whatever I was fixing or replacing at that time. So if a noise was there before and I go test drive it afterwards and it's still there, obviously uh, I know it was already there, and I'm going to try to look for it when I do the multi-point inspection. Now, if I do something and now we have a new noise, then obviously it's probably something that I did and I need to go back and check my work. So uh, first things first, we go and test drive the vehicle, or at least I do a 99 out of 100 times. Uh, sometimes it's cars that can't be driven. In that case, uh, you know, for unsafety reasons, like it has no brake pedal, it doesn't start, whatever the case may be, obviously it can't be test driven, so we won't be doing it at that point. So I test drive the vehicle, make sure everything's working. We check the lights, we check the wiper blade condition, wiper condition, sometimes they don't work. Um, you know, make sure all the lights are working. Um, stuff like that. I check the mount, um, hoses, radiators, uh, water pumps, uh, stuff like that. We're not going to pull out spark plugs. That's just not a thing we do. It takes way too long and you should be getting them done around 100,000 miles or so unless if you had an issue. So um, if you know you've done them, great. Uh, don't need to do them. Just tell that technician, hey, I've done them last visit. Or I did them somewhere else. I did them myself, whatever the case may be. And great, everybody's happy. Um, so obviously, we're going to check your brakes, your uh, tires, uh, suspension, and stuff like that. And uh, your filters, you know, check for all this stuff. We're going to check also for leaks, your battery condition, uh, any dry rotted components at all, some bushings. Um, make sure nothing is leaking, nothing is torn, um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, as the car gets older, it's pretty obvious that we're going to encounter more stuff. And as a uh, train technicians that do this on a pretty repetitive basis, we know uh, nine out of 10 times, uh, basically what's going to be wrong with that car uh, based on uh, age and mileage. So uh, we tend to kind of check the same things over and over. Um, sometimes we'll get some surprises because not everything fails the same exact way, but typically a car with 100,000 miles will have almost the same exact failures or problem areas as another car with 100,000 miles. So we're kind of drawn to those specific areas that we know of. And it is nice that you take your car to either a Honda dealer or Nissan or Toyota or Ford, whatever the case may be, because those technicians are uh, familiar with that vehicle and they knew, do know exactly, uh, for the most part, what is a, a failure point and a, a problem with that you know, uh, typical uh, model, model year and stuff like that. So hopefully it answers the question for you. All right, last but not least, question of the week. And once again, if you want a chance to win any questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below and I'll try to get to each and every question. So this person is stating that their car has an excessive vibration when the AC is turned on. So some of the things that could be causing this 
are uh, bad engine mounts not absorbing that vibration in the way that sh there should be. So a mount doesn't technically have to be torn. It can be collapsed and causing the same type of scenario. So when I mean collapse is most of them have a space from the mount bracket to the actual mount body. So when a mount collapses, it's not torn just the inside of it no longer is supporting the engine and that mount bracket is resting on a base causing excessive a bracket so that could be with more loads that you're feeling it more or just changing the angle of the engine slightly it also could be in reverse or drive sometimes we do get more excessive vibration uh, especially when adding a load at that point so something to look for another thing that could be uh bad is your throttle body could be carboned up and the plate may not be opening uh, sufficient enough to make up for that extra carbon causing the idle to drop just enough to where it causes you know uh, excessive vibration versus having no load so uh typically you will feel um you know when a load comes on most of these cars do a phenomenal job of uh, isolating isolating that although as a vehicle's age um you know they tend to uh, have worn out parts and you could start feeling it some more so um, obviously that would be some of the reasons and something to look for as the vehicle gets older. Uh, just keep in mind those two things. And now, um, if something is mechanically wrong with the compressor and it's not rotating correctly and it's binding the pistons are, you know, a catastrophic failure inside the compressor, then it could be that it's uh, that component itself and causing your issue. And at that point, you should get it looked at and make sure that your compressor is working and stuff like that. If it's not working correctly or binding or anything of that nature, then obviously it's something you want to address uh, and get it repaired correctly. So with that being said, hope that answered the question for you and I'll catch everyone on the next one.